Sup Chooms, hold the presses. We have some breaking news on HMI 115. I just got wind that the results of the Phase 1B study of the prolactin receptor antibody known as HMI 115 have just been released. So let's head over to the website of the Chinese company that makes the drug Cope Medicine, or excuse me, I mean Hope Medicine. Sorry, my Mandarin at the moment is a little bit rusty, so let's take a look at the press release of the results instead. Well, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of information here. This was a very small study with just 16 subjects, which included 12 men and 4 women. Oh well, at least that's better data than one of the subjects leaking his own results on Reddit, right? Speaking of which, this is a treatment that a lot of people, including myself, have been following for a very long time, although I have to admit, I have been much more skeptical of this treatment than other hair tubers. Back a few months ago, the announcement was made that this phase 1 study was completed, but there were no details of the results. I made a video at that time that summarized everything known about HMI-115, which I'll go ahead and link below if you haven't seen it yet, and I'll go ahead and link my other videos on HMI-115 below as well. So what were the results? Well, the only number we have from this press release was that the number of non-vellus hairs increased by 14 hairs per square centimeter compared to before treatment. This was after 24 weeks of treatment. This result was statistically significant, meaning it was not due to simply chance, but these results seem pretty underwhelming to me, especially considering just how much hype HMI-115 has gotten over the past few years. First of all, the result is only for the 12 male subjects. Like, what happened to the female subjects here? Since they aren't reported, they they probably didn't have any significant hair growth at all. So why not just give us the changes in hair counts for the whole group, both for men and for women? That's probably because if women were included, the results would look even less impressive and might not have even been statistically significant. In fact, as I pointed out in my last video on HMI-115, a prolactin receptor antibody might be less effective in women since research indicates that the effects of prolactin are different in men and women. In men, prolactin promotes the catagen phase, which terminates the antigen growth phase, while in women, prolactin promotes the antigen growth phase. So this could explain negative results in the few women in this study. Also, there was no placebo control comparison group, and the study was not blinded in any way whatsoever. Without a control group, there is no way to tell if the growth was any better than a placebo. Also, like I said, the results are a little underwhelming here. How does 14 hairs per square centimeter compare to finasteride minoxidil, for instance? Well, in this meta-analysis of finasteride and minoxidil studies published in 2022, after the same treatment period of 24 weeks used in the HMI-115 study, the increase in hair counts using 1 mg per day of oral finasteride versus placebo was a net gain of 30 hairs. For 5% minoxidil, the average gain was 11 hairs. So at best, this treatment looks comparable to topical minoxidil and inferior to finasteride. As any dermatologist will tell you, finasteride is much more effective at maintaining what you have than it is at regrowing hair that you've lost. But even by the standards of hair regrowth, finasteride is nearly twice as effective as HMI-115. That may explain why the photographic evidence that was leaked on Reddit looks so damn mediocre. I mentioned at the time that maybe that picture was an outlier and that the other subjects got better results, but this new research seems to confirm the substandard results we saw in that photograph. So you may be thinking, okay, well it's not as good as finasteride, but at least it helps a little bit, right? Well, no. There are some major problems we simply can't just sweep aside here. First of all, HMI-115 has been getting hyped up for years, mostly by finasteride haters. They think that since macaca monkeys did well in some preliminary research, that means that HMI-115 will turn a Norwood 7 into a Norwood 1 for life after just a few injections. It's clear that the people who have been looking forward to this drug have been smoking way too much hopium because the reality is, is that HMI-115 is just a weak adjunctive therapy at best. Best. That would be fine in most circumstances, but the problem here with HMI-115 is that it is a monoclonal antibody. Monoclonal antibodies are insanely expensive, so it's not like minoxidil where you can buy a three-month supply for 20 bucks. Here is a study published in 2018 that analyzed the price of 107 different monoclonal antibody treatments. The study found that the average price of these treatments was $96,731 per year, and some of the treatments cost almost a million dollars per year. Year. If you think you're going to convince your health insurance company to cover the cost for this cosmetic treatment because you're too scared to take finasteride, then good luck with that. For the price consumers are likely going to pay for this, it damn well should be better than finasteride, since finasteride you can buy for as cheap as just $10 per month, especially if you're quartering 5 milligrams of Proscar tablets like I do. But 
HMI 115 is not better. It is worse than finasteride, despite probably ending up costing more than its weight in platinum. So, is there any positive at all to any of this? Like, is the drug at least safe? Well, the press release says that the study shows that the drug is safe and well tolerated, but that still remains to be seen here, Chooms. We're talking about just 16 subjects. You need a lot more than that to claim a drug is safe, especially since this drug is an antibody to the prolactin receptor that is injected directly into the skin of the abdomen, and therefore, it definitely has to go systemic in order to reach the hair follicles. And we're talking about prolactin here. Prolactin is not known to be a trash hormone, unlike the trash hormone DHT. Anyways, Dr. Rodney Sinclair and the other researchers are apparently happy with the results because as we already reported in the last video on HMI-115, Hope Medicine has already launched a phase 2 study in China which they hope to finish this year. So, phase 1 studies are always small and very preliminary studies and you really can't tell much about either efficacy or safety from them. This drug still has a very long way to go before it will see the light of day, if that ever even happens at all. I mean, it might be a moderately effective hair growth stimulant, but so far it looks like it is clearly less effective than 5 error blocking drugs like finasteride and dutasteride. And like I said, I'm worried about the cost of monthly monoclonal antibody injections as well as the risk of blocking prolactin receptors throughout the entire body, and I talk about that a bit more in my previous videos on HMI-115. So I was already skeptical of HMI-115 before I saw this press release, and after having read it thoroughly, I still remain skeptical of HMI-115's efficacy as well as its practicality as a hair loss treatment. It will be simply too expensive of a treatment to justify its mediocre results. I guess though it's possible that subsequent research with larger subject sizes could show better results, but even so, this treatment is still many years away. A lot of the people who are eagerly anticipating this drug's availability are balding people who are too scared to use finasteride. Their hair will not survive long enough for this treatment to hit the market, and even if it does, it will likely only give them minimal results at best, and that's assuming they even have deep enough pockets to afford it. I don't take any joy in delivering this bad news to you guys, because as great as finasteride and minoxidil are, I still want there to be new treatments and I welcome innovations to treating hair loss. But when I see people abstaining from clinically proven treatments that are available now in hopes that there will one day be some obscure chemical in the distant future that will save their hair, that's when I feel that it is time to take the red pill and realize that this miracle treatment is not likely going to happen in time. I know it sucks. I wish I were born a thousand years into the future where hair loss is only known about in a historical digital library at the University of Proxima Centauri, but when it comes to fighting hair loss, you have to go to battle with the weapons we have have, not the weapons we wish existed. So please, Chooms, just get on finasteride and forget about HMI-115, at least for now and at least until we have better data about the drug. As sick as I am about the subject, I will cover it again once more data becomes available, I promise. But as it stands today, HMI-115 is more of a coping mechanism for anti-finasteride cowards than it is a legitimate hair loss treatment. All right, Chooms, I'm going to be back with a follow-up video to my Brian Johnson video, so make sure you check back soon. Thank you.